Hello everybody. Lately I was on the official Wikicode Discord server and someone had posted a movie called Dominion, telling the other users to watch it if they eat meat. I eat meat, so of course I had a look, and I quickly learned that it's a movie that tries to get people to think about their meat consumption, to nudge them to become vegan. This fascinated me, and I quickly learned that there are multiple movies like it. Within my research I learned that there are seven movies which are credited with making people vegan. List after list, website after website, feature the same seven movies. So I figured I would watch them all. Together there are about 12 hours of footage and I figured I could make a video having a look at those. Just so you know, I was not vegan when I started watching these. I'm not trying to make you vegan. I'm just telling you the things I learned as well as the parts where I disagree with the documentaries. Am I still a meat eater after so much vegan content? Well, you will know by the end of the video, so stay tuned. Because some of those movies show animal slaughter in really graphic ways, I decided not to show you clips from them. But I will show you non-graphic images. However, I will not shy back from describing the graphic things I learned and saw while watching this. Whenever I describe something graphic, you will see the image of this nice seal to distract you from the horrors you hear. So if you're sensitive to animal abuse and descriptions of gore and violence, why don't you watch this video instead? It's an animation I made where I explain Lenin as a children's story. And I took it down ages ago. So this is your only chance to ever watch it. One last note, with seven movies on similar subjects, there are a lot of overlaps. I decided only to explain everything once and to balance it so I talk for the same amount of time for every section. Because of this it can happen that I discuss things that do not happen in that movie but rather another one. This is because in my mind everything started to mix together. So if you watch one of these movies and don't see the things I mentioned, they are in one of the other ones. By the way I will link the movie list in the description if you want to watch them. That being said, let us finally start. The seven movies all have different approaches to making you vegan. The first one called Earthlings is mostly based on showing the horrible conditions farm animals live in nowadays. It starts off explaining how humans are not the only ones on Earth. We share the planet with animals who are also Earthlings, hence the title. The movie has lots of emphasis on the fact that animals and humans should be equal. And if you disagree, you're a speciesist who discriminates based on species. There is also a holocaust comparison in the intro. Then it starts off explaining things about pets. They explain puppy mills, in which dogs are locked in one by one meter cages for their entire lives to make more cute baby dogs to be sold to people like you and me. These dogs show a lot of signs of mental illness, like pacing in circles in the cages. They also talk about stray animals, who are so abundant that the most humane thing to do is to euthanize them, because the average person would rather buy a puppy than an old rescue dog. Stray dogs in general are mistreated and there is footage of a stray being thrown into a dumpster truck and being crushed to death. And now you realize just how graphic this video may be. Last chance to opt out, because we're continuing with how cows are treated. When cows are born, they are dehorned which means their horns are removed with garden shears. The horns have nerves and blood vessels, so not only does the blood spray everywhere, the animal also cries out in extreme pain. The young cows are separated by gender. The females are kept to make milk and the males are killed. We will return to that process later. Milk cows are often crammed together in feedlots, where they have barely any space and are fed reinforced grain to increase their milk production. Just like humans, cows only lactate when they have a child, so the cows are forcefully impregnated once a year, only to immediately be separated from their young, which is devastating for animals that bond so much with their young. Once the milk cow can no longer make milk, it is sent to slaughter. Beef cattle spend the last month of their lives in feedlots where they eat grain to fatten them up. After that is done, they are sent to the slaughterhouse where they are not given food or water or protection from the elements until they are sent into what is called a knock box, where they have a metal bolt shot into their brain to kill them. But often they are only immobilized, not killed. And the next step is a worker with a long knife 
cutting open their throat to let them bleed out while hanging them upside down. You may think there's no way a cow would survive that, but they do. And after the throat is cut, they're lowered into a bath of boiling water to remove their hair. The ones that survived the knocking and cutting now drown in scalding water. Now you may think that eating kosher meat would be a solution. Under kosher rules, an animal cannot be touched while bleeding and must be as comfortable as possible. But those guidelines are ignored by the industry almost always for the sake of profit and speed. Veal may have the worst life in all farmed cows. Right after they are born, they are tied with the neck to the floor so that they cannot walk at all. Because muscle growth would spoil the taste. After eight weeks, they are killed like all others. Then the documentary says, if we have to hunt our own food, we'd all be vegetarians. And after looking at the slaughterhouses, I may agree. The movie continues to talk about seafood and how for every ton of fish caught, the nets scoop up two tons of bycatch, like dolphins, sharks and many more. They say that at current rates, our oceans will be free of life in 2048. They also talk about individual fishing. I never thought about it, but fishing is pretty brutal. You lure a hungry animal near you, you put a hook through its face and they continue to pull it out of the place where it can breathe. It's actually a death sport if you think about it this way. The movie also talks about whaling and dolphins in captivity, but you probably already know about these stories. It also shows Canadians clubbing seals, which I just think is disgusting. Yes, they say it's part of the culture, but when your culture leads you to harm innocent beings, then fuck it. If it's your culture to kill seals for their skin, then it's my culture to shoot people who club seals on sight. Did you know that bulls are actually really tame animals? But we've all seen rodeos, right? They go buck wild in those, so what's up with that? Well, the people running rodeos need to make the bulls angry. How do you do that? Well, by hitting and stabbing them and by tail breaking. Basically, breaking an animal's tail is breaking parts of their spine, which causes them immense pain that can make them go insane. But if that's not enough, they also tie a rope around the animal's abdomen and around their genitals. And when the animal needs to get going, they yank on that rope, causing the animal unimaginable pain. This is why they buck so much. They are not wild, they are hurt. It also talks about zoos, but anyone who's ever been to a zoo knows that the animals there are just miserable. I don't need to elaborate a lot. The last part that shows the scientific research with animals. It shows baboon head strike injuries, where a baboon is fixed and then hit with 60 G in the head using a huge hydraulic press. This supposedly helps us understand head injuries from a car crash and it kills many innocent monkeys. The documentary also shows researchers burning a pig to the point that its skins fall off. Not sure what this research is used for, but I sure won't get that image out of my head. In total, this documentary tries to convince people using shock and gore, and frankly, for me it did not work. I still ate schnitzel the day after watching it. This may be because my mom showed me a documentary like this back when I was 10, so I may be desensitized. The next one has a different approach though. It is more concerned with the climate and sustainability rather than the suffering of the animals. It starts off with a man who wanted to save the climate, so he took shorter showers and all that, uh, but then he came across a study which actually showed that the food industry is responsible for 51% of climate change. This stood out because most of the time food production is left out of the CO2 statistics. So he starts going around to expert after expert asking them how to save water. One says to fix leaky sprinklers, which is funny because eating one hamburger at McDonald's uses about as much water as showering for two months. When the leaky sprinkler guys asked about this, he has nothing to say. Our documentary man takes this as a sign of a conspiracy. He explains how animal agriculture is why the rainforest is cut down. He mentions how one pound of or half a kilo of meat uses 3000 liters of water to produce and then keeps trying to schedule interviews about the impact of agriculture on the climate. Greenpeace, along with most others, declined to comment. He theorizes that the topic of eating less meat is too unpopular. And we all know that Greenpeace is all about being popular. 
he goes to interviews and asks people about the leading cause of deforestation. And when they don't say agriculture, he whips out his one study that confirms what he's believing and reads it out to them in some sort of gotcha. It's extremely similar to Ben Shapiro. He keeps talking to people who have not read the one study he cites, and when they say things that contradict his one source, he makes it sound like they're part of a conspiracy. He says that we need less dairy in our diet. One gallon of milk is 1,000 gallons of water, which is true. We should definitely reduce our dairy consumption. And this is the documentary. True problems with animal agriculture and the global supply chain interspersed with him pretending that there's a conspiracy to hide it. The conspiracy being perpetuated by all environmental protection activists as well as the US government for some reason. Eventually his funding got cut by the network and he cut it into the documentary as if it was part of a conspiracy instead of a cost-saving measure. Then he mentions how one billion people live in food insecurity on the planet, which is true and I talked about it a lot because I personally see it as a failure of capitalism. He does not go there. He says that if we stopped feeding grain to cattle, we could feed five billion more people and eradicate hunger in the world, which would be amazing. But don't strictly need that. Earth produces enough food for 10 billion people right now. We could already feed everyone if we transported food waste to places that need food. But that does mean that if we were all vegan, we could feed 15 billion people. Mention that the next time someone says overpopulation. The documentary also shows a small time farmer beheading a duck for eating. This is clearly shown as a bad thing, but frankly, if you have ducks in your garden and you feed them and you let them eat grass and you slaughter them yourself, it may just be one of the most morally defensible forms of meat consumption. At least if you ask me. The documentary ends saying you can't be an environmentalist and eat animal products. This one is a wild ride. It is right that animal agriculture on the scale we have is destroying the environment and that it's a huge waste of food and water. All important true points. And it is right that we need to reduce meat consumption to maybe only eat meat once or twice a week. But its insistence on the existence of some huge conspiracy is just silly and makes the entire documentary seem like an unhinged conspiracy rant, which I think is unfortunate. The next one is called Forks Over Knives. It's on Netflix, but not available in my location. This would be the perfect segue into a VPN sponsorship. But when I explained the topic of the video, they refused to sponsor me. So instead, this video is sponsored by Kindle Unlimited. Would you like to read? Leftists are always all about reading theory. With today's sponsor Kindle Unlimited, you can get access to plenty of books. Want to read Marx, Lenin, Bakunin, Luxembourg? You can read all of them on any of your devices. If you use my link in the description to get access to over 1 million ebooks, thousands of audiobooks, which you can read or listen to on any device. So you can listen to Marx or Lenin if you don't feel like reading. Thank you to Kindle. The movie starts off with a disclaimer that it is not professional medical advice. You know it will get good if they start off like that. Basically, this movie is about the health issues that our modern food system can cause. They explain how 40% of Americans are obese and that many years ago, before fast food, this number was way lower. I don't think it's radical to say that Westerners, not just Americans, eat too much fast food and meat, to such an extent that it hurts our life expectancy. Heart disease is one of the most common killers. The man making the documentary goes to a doctor to have his values checked and, like most Americans in their early 50s, he has a staggeringly high cholesterol level and also pre-diabetes. So he seeks out an unconventional doctor. That doctor is a vegan and decides to put him on a 12-week vegan diet and to take him off all of his meds. It's a lot like Super Size Me. In case you don't know it, Super Size Me was a documentary by an American in which he would eat only fast food and recorded himself doing it showcasing the negative health effects. This documentary is the opposite. It is someone only eating plants and things like that. This diet is based on the idea that people eat too much meat and processed sugar, which again in the West is a pretty sure bet. They show off images of coronary heart disease along with footage of bypass operations. Then they explain that study after study shows that meat protein is less healthy. Of course, the protein in meat and protein in beans is chemically the same stuff, 
but it's entirely possible that animal meat comes with other molecules that could cause negative effects. They actually draw a conclusion between the meat consumption and cancer rates, not only in the US but also in China. The studies on this topic are messy. Lots of research suggests cancer risks from high meat consumption, but there's plenty of research arguing the other way, which just so happens to often be funded by the cattle industry lobbyists. So does this documentary prove that meat is unhealthy? Not entirely, it mainly says that our current meat consumption is bad, and I think we would agree. They do not mention how decreasing meat intake to once or twice a week would change things. The message is that we need to eat less fast food and meat. And I agree, but I'm not entirely sold that we can't have any meat at all anymore because of this. The next one is called Food Inc. and it's on Amazon Prime. If you want to buy Prime, use my link in the description. It's an affiliate link, I make a bit of money if you use it. This one can be said to be about the food industry as a part of the economy. It's not about animal or environmental suffering, not about human health, just about how the industry is changing the world. As a communist, this one was right up my lane. The documentary shows that most food businesses are owned by a handful of companies. You've probably seen this chart before. They examined chickens. See, in the past, farmers used to own their chicken and their barns, and they would sell their chicken to the slaughterhouse. The slaughter process will appear in a later section. But now big chicken companies, and there are only a couple of them, changed the system. Now they own the chicken, from birth to slaughter. The farmer only provides the feed and place for them to live, meaning the farmer owns everything that costs money and the companies own everything that makes money. To make sure the farmers remain poor, the companies demand expensive upgrades all the time. And if someone should talk to the media about this problem, then they will be sent worse chickens to grow and be paid a lot less through no fault of their own. The farmers are essentially being suffocated by these huge chicken companies. The documentary next says that the American government subsidizes corn to incredible amounts, which is true, and they make it into high fructose corn syrup, which you can find in close to every product in the United States, despite its known health risks. Reduce your processed sugar if you can. Not only too much meat is bad, too much sugar is also bad. Next, the documentary explains how feeding cows corn instead of grass makes the rates of E. coli increase. E. coli is a bacteria that lives in the digestive tracts of cows and other animals. When eaten, it is dangerous. The theory goes that a gut full of corn allows more E. coli to develop in the animal. When the meat is processed into burger patties or similar things, it is possible that this gut bacteria is in the food. And there was a case of a kid dying from eating a burger with bad meat. And his mother has ever since tried to get Congress to shut down the slaughterhouses that make beef. Congress did not do that, and she says it's a conspiracy by Baker Cow. Um, well, not to minimize her suffering, but there's actually a way to consume food with E. coli in it safely. Um, you cook the food? The bacteria dies at 100 degrees Celsius. The only way to get infected is if you eat raw meat. This mother should not complain with the beef industry. She should sue the place her son got the undercooked burger from. They killed her son not farmers feeding cows cheap corn. They also repeat the whole thing about McDonald's being too cheap, so poor people cannot afford better food, so they all get diabetes and heart problems eventually, explaining the 40% obesity rate. They also show industrial pork factories, but not out of concern with the animal well-being, but rather with the workers, who are forced to work overtime in a distressing, loud, traumatizing workplace. As a socialist and former factory worker, I feel for these guys. They explain how Monsanto is preventing people from reusing their seeds, so the farmers need to buy new seeds every single year. If not, they're sued into poverty. Big companies use the legal system to come after activists and documentary makers. Not the big surprise in the United States of America, if you ask me. It ends saying that people need to vote with their dollar to end this, and they say that you can vote to change the system three times a day which is very optimistic and entirely liberal and almost definitely won't work. The executives at their board meetings have a lot more influence than you have with all the money you ever made. The next documentary is called The Game Changers. It also starts off with the disclaimer clarifying that it is not medical advice. This one follows athletes 
who are vegans or vegetarians. The last one about health talked about the negative health effects of meat. This one is talking about the positive effects of a meatless diet. The movie starts off saying that gladiators in ancient Rome were vegetarians and finds a strong MMA fighter who only eats plant-based food. The conclusion they come to is that meatless eating is best for fighting. I got to disagree. The reason gladiators ate no meat was not because it would make them fight better. It was because they were slaves and meat was expensive. And the MMA fighter became vegan for unrelated reasons as well. But the documentary actually shows that most athletes eat way less meat than the average person does right now. They eat meat once or twice a week, ignoring bodybuilders. I mean runners and cyclists and a bunch. And I believe that this confirms my belief that ultimately meat once or twice a week is the best balance. The movie again explains how meat protein is associated with worse health outcomes and how plant protein does not have such issues. They show their vegan MMA fighter defeating a meat eating one which is cool. Uh, then the host of the documentary goes vegan for a bit, same as two movies ago. They actually got Arnold Schwarzenegger, the muscle man, Terminator and governor of California. Shockingly enough, he says that he's working to be a vegetarian for health reasons, which at his age makes sense. Frankly, I'm impressed that someone who took so many steroids in his youth can even still be alive today, and he's in quite the shape for a 75 year old. The documentary then points out that primitive human ancestors were not eating meat that much. You see, the teeth of meat eaters look like this, while well, ours look like this. Our teeth look more like deer teeth than the dog teeth. They use this to say we're supposed to be vegetarian. They also explain that the reason we have fangs, aka these teeth here, is because our ancestors used them for fighting, not eating. I am entirely willing to accept that humans did not evolve to rip apart raw meat. However, we evolved to eat cooked food, which is not that tough, so it can be chewed by us without needing special teeth. Yes, we're not made to exclusively eat meat, but to point at our teeth to say that we're supposed to be vegetarians is an oversimplification and an appeal to nature as well. And then they make an experiment that men who eat more meat get longer and stronger erections, which I will just leave here for you to ponder. They mention that soy does not include mammal estrogen, but stuff like milk does. Uh, the documentary ends with an appeal to people to become vegan. And Arnold Schwarzenegger says, if you tell people to stay away from meat, they will say fuck you. But if you tell them the facts about eating meat, they may change their minds. Wise words. The next movie is called Dominion. And it's just like the first one. A huge gore fest showing the graphic details of our modern food system. This is also the only one available to watch on YouTube, but it is age restricted. It is also probably the most traumatic one of these documentaries. Just hearing animals scream out of pain for so long takes a toll. It starts off talking about cows, but we already had cows, so for us it starts off with pigs. Pigs are bred in little cages like this. Their mother is put into a tiny cage like this where she can do nothing besides lay and let the piglets drink her milk. Sometimes they turn around and unknowingly uh, crush their offspring. That offspring, by the way, also endures a lot of suffering. For example, they have their teeth clipped off. If you have ever been to a dentist, you know that teeth have nerves, which makes this horrifying. Almost as horrifying as the next part. The farmers cut off the tails of the piglets. Remember, the tail is a part of the spine where the main nerves go. Why do they do these things? To make sure that the piglets don't start eating each other when they are underfed. Some female pigs are used to replace the sows and keep the circle going. Do you know how they impregnate the sows? They shove these catheter things into their private parts. Where do they get that fluid from? Jerking off a boar, of course. Which would not be my dream job. To return to the piglets, they are often abused by the workers. This documentary is the only one showing how food workers have no respect for the animals they work with at all. There are recordings of workers throwing piglets around the room for escaping their cage. This casual animal abuse is a theme throughout the documentary and it happens to all animals mentioned. And even worse, when piglets are born, there's what they call the runt of the litter, the weakest one. And in this documentary they show workers taking these weaker ones and smashing their heads into the floor until they die. And that's the amazing thing about this documentary. 
I knew that sows were kept in conditions like that, but killing baby animals for profit, well, that one was new to me. Once the pigs are finally grown up, they're killed in gas chambers. The gas used burns their eyes and lungs and sinuses and every other body opening. In addition, it is not a poison, it's just replacing the air, so they slowly suffocate over minutes. The screams they give off during this are memorable. The only advantage of this is that the animals are definitely dead, which cannot be guaranteed with other methods. Remember, some cows are drowned in scalding water. Smaller farms use electrical stunning, which does not always work, so many pigs wake up while having their throats cut and being bled out. The videos of this are horrifying. The documentary moves on to chickens. First of all, the egg-laying ones. When they hatch, they're immediately sorted by male and female. The female ones go to a farm to lay eggs and the male ones are sent to what is called a macerator, which I would call a gore machine. You put in a living thing and meat sludge comes out. This is somehow considered humane. Of course, smaller farms instead use gas chambers to kill chicks, which I don't think is better. But the female chicks are chosen to survive, so they're immediately de-beaked. Which means that a machine cuts off the front of their beak. Reminder, the beak has nerves in it. So this is excruciating for the animals. Why is it done? Well, because they put thousands of chicks into one barn. And that stress can cause them to peck at each other, which is natural behavior. And instead of giving the chickens more or better space, they just cut off part of the body. The hens are then doomed to stand in wire cages for the rest of their lives, laying egg after egg for humans. Then they continue to poultry, aka chicken meat. For this there's a special breed of birds, but only the females grow so much, so the males are still turned into gore. These animals are going to gain weight as fast as possible. They gain weight so fast that they don't even have all feathers by the time they're sent to slaughter. In the slaughtering process, they are hung upside down to make blood pool in their head, which can cause them aneurysms. They are then put into an electrified bath, which knocks them out, except if they raise their heads, which about 1 in 10 does. And next comes the beheading blade, which slices open their throats. But some even survive that, and just like cows, they are then drowned in boiling water. The documentary then shows the same process for turkeys and ducks, frankly it's the same as for the chickens. But it also talks about duck hunting, another one of the death sports with no point. Duck hunters do not eat the animals they shoot, it's a sport, not dinner. It has been shown that duck hunters leave about as many birds injured as they kill. Not to mention they often shoot at endangered ducks as well. Presumably duck hunters give no shits. We are then introduced to plucking, where geese have all their feathers ripped out of their skin by underpaid workers. All while alive, of course. This is repeated three or four times within the lifetime of the goose. The same happens to rabbits as well. Most pillows are filled with cheap fur from China, where these conditions exist. Likewise, animals die for clothings. Minks and foxes are bred or captured for the skin. And sometimes, to save money, they're not even killed before being skinned. There's this shot of a fox who's just been skinned and he's looking at the camera and moving as if to ask why he deserved this. It was an image that burned itself into my brain. It's absolutely horrible. The last animal in this documentary is mice, used for animal trials. They mention how nowadays 95% of studies that pass animal trials do not pass human trials. The issue is that nowadays research is mostly focused on nuances of human biology, which animals cannot model. Instead, we should use human tissue samples, cadavers or computer simulations. Also, did you know that research animals cannot be released? Yeah, they all need to be killed. So oftentimes researchers gas mice, because there's nothing else they can do. The last documentary is called 73 Cows. The title is not explained and it's only 15 minutes, so it's more like a YouTube video than a real documentary. It's about the farmer who inherited a farm from his parents, and their main business was cattle. Because he's a small farmer, he knows his animals by name. And he says how morally conflicted he was to send them to slaughter. He said it's abusing their trust to send them into a transport to their death. So eventually he worked towards alternatives to cattle farming. And now he grows food. Vegan food to be exact. He's now a vegan farmer and he gave all of his cows to sanctuary in the north where they can be happy and not be slaughtered. Now the locals love him because he is this very open public animal activist and vegan farmer making local fresh produce. This one's a feel-good story, and I'm glad it ended the list and not the previous one. 
Um, I think he owned 73 cows. That would make more sense for the title. In conclusion, uh, this collection of movies has a three-prong approach to trying to convince you to drop meat consumption. The element of feeling empathy for the poor abused animals we eat, the element of wanting to protect the environment, and the element of personal health. All this together should make you at least question your meat consumption. The idea is to make you drop not only meat, but also all animal products. But I think that conclusion is a bit much. Yes, eating meat every day will harm many animals and it will harm the environment and your health. But that does not mean that we need to go to the other extreme and eat no meat at all anymore. You could simply buy higher quality meat, which is not made in factory farms. There are websites that help guide you through that. You can just consume meat that is less bad for the environment. The reason the documentary focused on beef is because that is the worst. If you switched from beef to poultry, your impact on the environment would be way smaller. And most importantly, as I've repeated a hundred times, try to cut down your meat consumption to once or twice a week. And cut down on the refined sugar as well. Of course, there will be people who watch this and heard all the abuse and will turn vegan entirely because of empathy they have for the animals. And that's entirely valid. There are sure worse decisions you can make than becoming vegan. There are often people who say that being vegan is unhealthy. I found no such evidence. If they eat beans and nuts and have the protein they need and all vitamins are found in plants as well, it's entirely possible to be vegan and healthy. There are cases where people starve because of a vegan diet. There was a tragic case like that in the US not too long ago, but that was down to complete incompetence. They only ate raw fruits. To absorb all nutrients, fruits must be cooked and you need to use oil with them. Not to mention you need proteins, which fruits don't give. Eat some beans. So if you want to go vegan after hearing all these horrible things, I entirely understand. And if you won't change a thing, I get it too. I'm not here to force you into a conclusion. But now comes the exciting question. Am I vegan now? Is Vicky vegan after watching 12 hours of movies made to get people to drop meat? No. Vegan is too much. Pretty much everything I eat has milk powder in it. But I will definitely cut down on the meat to once or twice a week. For me, it was not the suffering animals that made me change. It was the health documentaries that got me. And after learning so much, I kind of lost my appetite for meat. Whether I will keep eating meat in low quantities or whether I'll turn vegetarian is a question I can't answer yet. But despite my thick-headedness, these movies touched me. In conclusion, check out my sponsor. And of course, I linked the article which has the link to all seven of these movies. Uh, are you vegan or vegetarian? Do you consume meat? If so, how much? Let me know in the comments. And while you're already scrolled down there, please leave a like and a comment. This video was of course demonetized. I wonder why. So I want to thank my patrons really much for their ongoing support. And I would like to especially thank Theon Hartley, Alan Bow, Eric Betts, Nane Pema, V, Sander Corbus, Tusnik, Attila Nemetz, Ben Harrison, Bottom Bitch Lena, Carissa, Daniel Hyman, Dominic Cusanelli, Emily Margot Fasson, Evie Wren, Herdina, Ian Snyder, Kevin Santos, Classroom, Lazy Z Panda234. DMS, Raman Deville, Red Shock Ruba, Sarah, Sean Murphy, Stemasashev, The Swiss Fanboy, Theon Gillian Jr., Totally Not Dwayne, Travis and Yamil. 